groom abandons bride at the altar and runs away with his pregnant lover. Years later he suffers the consequences. Pedro and Gina are a couple who met at work and have been together for four years. They dated and now they are engaged. They seem to love each other very much. Both families seem to approve of the relationship, and everything was going smoothly. What Gina doesn't imagine is that her fiancé Pedro is having a secret affair with another woman named Helena. The two maintained a relationship, but Pedro never left Gina aside and that's why she never suspected anything. Pedro acted so well that they have kept this hidden relationship for two years. Gina loved Pedro with all her heart and thought she had found the true love of her life. Pedro was willing to end his relationship with Helena and move on with Gina, as he didn't want to be seen as a scoundrel and saw Helena only as an adventure. But Helena told Pedro some news weeks before the wedding that changed everything. Helena said she was pregnant and that the child was his. At that moment, Pedro felt a range of mixed emotions and also said that his child could not grow up without a father. So at that moment, Pedro changed his mind and decided to stay with Helena, as this brought them together. The young man said he would see how to get out of this situation, so the unfaithful couple made vows of love and promises that they would be together forever. And in the end, this news brought them together. On the day of the wedding, everyone is waiting for the union of the couple Pedro and Gina. Gina was emotional and happy. Her friends and family looked at the bride with joy, without imagining what would happen next. An hour passed and Gina was apprehensive about the groom's delay. Time went by, and after another hour of waiting, the phone rings. Gina answers, and it was Pedro who spoke on the other side of the line and said, Gina! I'm so sorry, but we can't get married. I love another woman and we're leaving together. I'm sorry. I wish you all the happiness. She's pregnant and we're having a baby. My son won't grow up without a father. Pedro and Gina are a couple who met at work and have been together for four years. They dated and now they are engaged. They seem to love each other very much. Both families seem to approve of the relationship and everything was going smoothly. What Gina doesn't know is that her fiancé Pedro is having a secret affair with another woman named Helena. They were having an affair, but Pedro never left Gina aside, so she never suspected anything. Pedro was so good at acting that they had been keeping this relationship hidden for two years. Gina loved Pedro with all her heart and thought she had found the true love of her life. Pedro was willing to end his relationship with Helena and move on with Gina because he didn't want to be seen as a shameless person and saw Helena only as an adventure. But Helena told Pedro some news weeks before the wedding that changed everything. Helena said she was pregnant and the child was his. At that moment, Pedro felt a range of mixed emotions and also said that his child could not grow up without a father. So at that moment, Pedro changed his mind and decided to stay with Helena because this brought them together. The young man said he would see how to get out of this situation, so the unfaithful couple made vows of love and promises that they would be together forever. And in the end, this news brought them together. On the day of the wedding, everyone is waiting for the union of the couple Pedro and Gina. Gina was emotional and happy. Her friends and family looked on with joy at the bride without imagining what would happen next. One hour passed and Gina was apprehensive about the groom's delay. Time went by, and after another hour of waiting, the phone rang. Gina answered, and it was Pedro who spoke on the other end of the line and said, Gina, I'm sorry, but we can't get married. I love another woman, and we are leaving together. I'm sorry. I wish you all the happiness. She's pregnant and we're having a baby. My son won't grow up without a father. Gina is shocked and devastated by this and over the phone she says, How can you be such a scumbag? Pedro, you're miserable. You fooled me all this time. And Pedro, nervous, says, I'm sorry, Gina. I didn't want it to be like this. I was in a hidden relationship with Helena, but I never left you aside. 
I had confused feelings. But now I found out that I love Helena and I'm going to live with her and my son. Forgive me. I wish you all the happiness and that you find another man who truly loves you. Because it wouldn't be fair to keep fooling you and myself. I'm sorry, Gina. In tears, Gina says. I did everything for you and this is how you pay me? Okay. I'll tell you one thing. In this life, everything is paid back, and one day, life will demand what you did to me. This is not a curse. It's destiny. And Gina hung up the phone on Pedro's face. Gina, with a sad face and very disappointed, tells the guests. To everyone here, I say with great sadness that there will be no wedding. The groom broke up with me over the phone and ran away with his pregnant mistress. Pedro is a scumbag and shameless. He fooled me and made me look like a fool. I'm sorry, folks. You're free to take your gifts if you want. It's okay. Everyone looked at Gina with pity, as she was left without footing and completely devastated. Pedro's family apologizes for what happened and says that they didn't raise him that way and that it was never their intention to make Gina suffer. Gina sees that Pedro's family is not to blame and says goodbye to them. With her wedding dress and everything, she leaves that place supported by her family. Gina suffers a lot, and her parents and siblings help her to recover. Her friends also stay by her side and hope she gets better. Meanwhile, on the other side of the city, at an airport, Pedro and Helena board a plane and move to another state to escape the disapproving and outraged looks that would be present in people. Helena and Pedro live their lives and are now a family. Meanwhile, Gina continues to cry and is completely devastated by the wedding that never happened. The woman becomes more and more depressed and sad over time. Three years later, after several psychiatric treatments and with the help of her family and friends, Gina turns her life around. She starts running, working out, studying, and working for a company. One day, at her new job, she meets a man named Patricio, a young, elegant, handsome, and refined man, the son of a wealthy family and the owner of this company. The man was very humble and honorable. Gina was Patricio's secretary, and he treated her very well, even though he was a rich man from a very high social position. He never used his power to humiliate or abuse his employees and subordinates always treating everyone with equality and fairness. Gina didn't hide that she came from a middle-class family because she didn't deny her origins. Patricio nurtured feelings for Gina every day, and over time, he seemed to like her a lot. One day, the man, with all his courage, says to Gina, Hello, Gina. Would you like to go out with me? Take a walk one of these days. Gina is touched by the request and honored. Out of respect for her boss, she accepts his proposal. Although Patricio was truly interested in Gina, Gina didn't want to have a relationship with anyone because she had the aftermath of being left at the altar and no longer trusted men, preferring to live a single life. But Patricio noticed this indifference and tried not to force anything on Gina, respecting the girl. However, that indifference only fueled his heart. He wouldn't give up on her, and every day, their friendship unfolded, and Patricio was more in love and determined to win Gina's heart. The man, excited, organized a dinner at his house and invited Gina, and then he declared himself and said, Gina, I'm in love with you since the first time I saw you. I can't get you out of my head. Will you be my girlfriend? Gina trembled and still surprised, said, I feel very honored, but you are from an elevated position and I am from a simple and humble family. I have no titles, and I'm not from a golden cradle like you. Are you sure about this? With a smile on his face, Patricio said, Gina, my parents were from a middle-class family like yours, and they fought hard to get where they are, and they taught me many principles. Thanks to them, I am this amazing person, and thanks to the good education they gave me, I love you. Gina, who had already been nurturing feelings for Patricio for some time, decided to give herself a chance and accepted Patricio's proposal. Patricio and his family seemed to like Gina, 
and she got along very well with Patricio's siblings and parents. In parallel, Pedro was living his fairy tale with Helena and her son in another state, missing his family from his hometown, and at the same time, afraid of their reaction when returning to his old city. After two years of dating, at Patricio's house, in front of his parents and siblings, Patricio kneeled for Gina and showed a wedding ring, saying, Gina, will you marry me? Will you be my wife and the lady of my life? When Gina saw that wedding ring, a mixture of sadness and joy came to her mind. Patricio, seeing Gina's reaction, asked, What's wrong, my love? Did I do something wrong? Tell me what it is, and I'll fix it now. And Gina, emotional, said, No, Patricio. You didn't do anything to me. But seeing this ring brought memories to my mind. Patricio's mother asked and said, But what happened to my daughter? Explain to us. Whatever it is, we will help. And Patricio adds, Tell me, my love, we're here to listen. Whatever it is, we'll understand. So Gina told her whole story of what happened about her wedding where she was left standing at the altar, her unfaithful fiancé who ran away with a pregnant mistress, and all her suffering. Patricio and his family were moved by Gina's story and felt very sorry for her. Patricio then opened up to Gina and said, My love, I know what you feel, I've been through it too. Surprised, Gina said, How so, Patricio? Someone in your position and standard who has everything couldn't have gone through it. My God! How small the world is! Emotionally, Patricio replied, I was about to get married three years before I met you. My ex fiance left me standing at the altar and ran away with an old boyfriend. Everything you suffered, I suffered too. I had depression, cried a lot, and even thought about taking my own life. But thanks to my family, I recovered and today I'm here. I know what you feel because I felt it too. Gina takes Patricio's hand and, to the eyes of her family, holds on to having found true love. She accepts the proposal. After six months of preparation for the big occasion, Patricio is at the altar waiting for his beloved, and Gina arrives in a beautiful dress, in front of all the guests. They get married and their families are emotional. They go to the event location and, in front of the guests, have a wedding waltz and everyone is happy. Three months later, Gina becomes pregnant, which made Patricio emotional. The joy of motherhood and fatherhood made the couple very happy. But ahead, life would give Pedro and Helena a surprise they would never forget. One fine day, Helena and Pedro are at their home and someone knocks on the door and to their surprise, a ghost from Helena's past appears in her life. It was a man named Raphael. Helena nervously says, I can't believe it. How did you find me and what are you doing here? You idiot. And Raphael, also nervous, says, It doesn't matter how I found you. Where is our son? I want to see our son. And Helena shouts, Get out of here. Leave now. Raphael grabs Helena and says, It doesn't matter. I want both of you. You and our son. I love you both. And Raphael grabs Helena and forcibly kisses her on the mouth. At this moment, Pedro arrives and comes across the scene and says, Helena, what are you doing with this guy? I want an explanation. At that moment, Raphael says to Helena and Pedro's face, You chose me over him, a guy who left his bride at the altar and is also raising another man's child. What an idiot you are. In anger, Pedro tries to go after Raphael, but Helena tries to calm things down. However, Raphael says in a mocking and sarcastic tone to Pedro's face, This child he is raising is not his son. I am the real father of this child. And Pedro, surprised, says, Helena, tell me this is a lie. Helena becomes nervous and starts to stutter. Raphael responds, In fact, this woman was only with you to get your money during these years. You can do a DNA test. She didn't tell me about this pregnancy and I found out everything through a friend. She was with me and with you. But the real father, it's me. 
At that moment, the world collapsed on Pedro's head and everything he believed he was living turned out to be a big lie. And Pedro, in tears, says, How could you do this? Helena, I left my future wife at the altar to be with you. I fled to another state, left everything for you, and this is how you thank me. And Helena, crying, says, Think about the child. He's not to blame for anything. And Pedro says, Enough. Helena, you won't manipulate me anymore. Here is the real father of this child. I'm not obliged to support a child who is not mine. But since this house is in your name, and I gave it to you as a gift, you can keep it. But my financial support is over. I'm sorry for leaving a wonderful woman like Gina for someone like you. I'm going back to my hometown to get Gina back and ask for forgiveness. Your game of manipulation is over. I never want to see you again. Disappear from my life. And at that moment, Pedro goes to his room, packs his bags and leaves the house, saying goodbye to the boy, recognizing that the child was not at fault. Helena and Raphael stay behind, and Raphael tries to hug Helena, but she rejects him and is frustrated that her scheme has been discovered. Pedro travels by plane again and upon returning to his hometown, he sees the consequences of his actions. His friends turned their backs on him, and his family rejected him, which made him sad and tearful. He begs the people to talk about Gina, but no one does. So he goes to look for Gina's family to ask for forgiveness, but they mercilessly expelled him. Only a friend gave him the address of Gina's location and warned him that he wouldn't like what he sees. But Pedro went to see her anyway, to ask for her forgiveness and try to win Gina back. Upon arriving at the location, Pedro sees a mansion where Gina was caressing her belly, which was already seven months pregnant. Pedro then knocks on the door, and Gina answers. Gina is surprised and says, Pedro, long time no see. I haven't seen you since you left me standing at the altar and ran away with your pregnant mistress. Pedro, in tears and on his knees, says, Gina, my love, I came to ask for your forgiveness and a new chance to start over, and... But Pedro notices Gina's belly and says, You're pregnant? And Gina, in a gentle and kind way, says, Yes, I'm seven months pregnant. I'm going to be a mother. Pedro, upon seeing this scene, became sad and completely devastated. Gina asks, and your child with your mistress? Helena, you're not the father? And Pedro, crying, says, that child was not mine. Helena tricked me. I wasn't the father. It was all a scheme planned by that miserable woman. And Gina says, I'm sorry, Pedro. Now I'm married and happy. I met an incredible man who truly loves me. And as you saw, I'm going to be a mother. And Pedro humbling himself, on his knees and crying, says, Gina, forgive me. Come back to me. We love each other. My life. As I told you, Helena tricked me. That child wasn't mine. I promise everything will be different, and I'll never cheat or deceive you again. Now I know how you felt after finding out about Helena's betrayal. Leave that guy and, if necessary, I'll even raise the child growing in your belly as if it were my own. I'm willing to do anything to be with you again. I still love you. I never stop thinking about you. And Gina kindly says, Pedro, I forgave you a long time ago. But I don't love you anymore. You caused me so much pain and suffering. Now I'm truly happy. I'm sorry. I wish you find a new love and everything goes well in your life. Now, please, don't come here anymore. Because my husband might not like my ex fiance showing up at our door. Goodbye, Pedro. I wish you all the best. And Gina closes the door slowly and goes inside. At Gina's doorstep, Pedro cried inconsolably. The guy was completely sad and devastated. He remembered Gina's words on the day he ran away with Helena and felt great remorse and saw that life had demanded everything he did to Gina. After completing her pregnancy, Gina gives birth to a boy, 
which made Patricio and Gina happy. Everyone was happy, but Pedro had to endure the consequences of his choice. No woman wanted to be involved with him, his family didn't want anything to do with him, and his friends cut ties with him. Pedro found himself abandoned and alone, and with that he went to the nearest bus station and moved to another city. Missing Gina every day and keeping a photo of Gina and him from their engagement as a keepsake. 